pro Game Boy ada di sini. Last few years have already seen me on this stage of the Hindu temple of Greater Fort Worth. And it goes without saying that uh, because of the love, the affection that the people here have always given to me, I have a very special bond with this place, with these people, with all of you. With my sincere thanks, once again, if I have to name, I will have to name everybody. And therefore, my gratitude reaches to all, even without naming them all. Thank you. And here we shall begin the topic of the satsanga. I will begin with a prayer of invocation, followed by a different pattern of satsanga this time, which means before we can commence our discussion we will have a short meditation practice. In the beginning, as well as at the end of the session. Between these two meditation practices, we will keep ourselves open, available, to absorb the knowledge, to become more alert, to understand where our scriptures, the Upanishad, wants to take us. So, in the very beginning, for the practice of meditation, why we are saying so? The reason is, <coughs> we need to stay collected. We not only need to stay collected, but at the same time, we require our minds, the intelligence which is alert. And therefore, in order to create a mind which is alert, which is collected, which is calm, there is some practice of meditation. And whenever any practice is undertaken, for you to actually get the result of that takes little time. It would be a very childish to say that I have practiced and where is the result? <laughs> Even for the egg to hatch, it takes time. For the chicken to be born, it takes time. For a simple little seed to be sprouted, it takes time. And therefore, a mature person is not going to demand 
show me the results quickly. Because remember, Rome was not built in one night. It had taken thousands of years for that civilization to come up. Anything can be destroyed very easily, but to build something takes tremendous effort, tremendous time, commitment. Breaking, destroying is easy. Creating, making is difficult. And here we are in the process of creating, cultivating a mind which is going to be your useful instrument, a very useful tool. So, I will give you some instructions, after which you can stay with that for some little time and then after, with a chanting of Om, we will, we will come out of the meditation, okay? Here is the Mangalacharanam and then after the instructions and then we will have discussion in between again followed by meditation. Naturally, the spinal cord, the backbone, is raised upwards. So the knees should go a few inches below the pin bones. Then bring your attention towards the pin bones and distribute the weight of the body equally on both the pin bones. Otherwise, 
the center of gravity will be not there and then you will be lopsided. By keeping your backbone erect is going to help you spread your lungs horizontally as well as vertically. Because most of the time when we sit, our shoulders collapse inside. As a result, the lungs get shortened. And then we do not have sufficient air as much as is the capacity of the lungs to breathe. So when you are straight, thus you help the lungs expand as much as they should expand. When the diaphragm raises itself, it can empty the lungs and the lungs once again can get filled to the fullest of its capacity. When this happens, a very important change you will notice and that is that the level of our alertness increases. That's because when we have sufficient oxygen, the supply of oxygen to the brain is also good. And therefore, the brain doesn't feel tired. And wherever there is this tedium, then naturally, the body is given the signal to rest by the brain. Body requires certain rest, but that signal is given when we do not have a brain which has sufficient energy supplied through proper breathing. And therefore, sitting erect is going to help you stay alert. Okay? Here we go. <clears throat> With your hands either uh, clasped together, you can put them, throw those hands in front of you. Or if you are comfortable, you could place those hands on your knees. Whichever is the position that makes you comfortable, you can follow that. This is so that the movement of the body is kept to the minimum. Now, with your posture adjusted, with your hands, legs, not shaking, moving or doing anything else, Try to stay still as much as possible. When the body is not going to occupy our attention, you can direct the attention towards the subtler aspects of our existence. As long as the body is going to arrest our attention till then, that what is subtle is always going to escape our attention. Now the body is comfortable. It has found its own center of gravity. There is nothing for the body to do except to cooperate in this practice of meditation. Now slowly turn your attention towards the passage of this breath. Though scientifically, the movement of the breath takes place 
through the nostrils into the lungs and back again from the lungs through the nostrils is the exhalation. Yet in our language of yoga, we will say that the breath travels from the nostrils up to the navel because in the process of inhalation and exhalation the muscles which are involved are up to the navel, the belly button. Nabhisthana. Follow the breath right from the nostril and observe how it goes down to the point that it makes the turn and becomes exhalation. The transition of prana to become vyana is to be observed and for a short moment before the inhalation becomes exhalation there is a very minute gap where the breath remains still This Sandhi Kaal, this particular phase of the switch over is to be observed. Do not obstruct the breath. Let it flow as freely as it comes. There is no kumbhaka involved over here or there is no rate 
Chakra with the count. It is simple breathing. It is only synchronization of the body, of the breath and of the thought. Where there is synchronization, there is harmony. Where there is no synchronization, there is conflict. Breathe in with the breath. Let the attention travel along with the breath. From the nasal passage to down below. And from the navel onwards, rising upwards. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat Parabrahma, Tasmai Shri Guru Vema, Tasmai Shri Guru slowly release and open your eyes. <coughs> Mahadev. <coughs> the topic that has been chosen to be discussed over these three evenings is the world and the wise man. And therefore, now we have to look at the various questions, various areas which will be related to this topic. What do you mean by a wise man? What is his relationship to the world? 
what meaning does the world hold for a wise man? And why should somebody be called as a wise man? And even if we know who is a wise man and how does he deal with the world, how does that help us? Does it give us anything that has to be practically done, followed, or is it only just curiosity that we are sitting over here to satisfy? Mere curiosity is not called as Jigyasa. Curiosity also means a desire to know. You are inquisitive. One wants to know. But there is no commitment to that process of knowledge. You are curious. And no commitment means, even if it is not known, you do not feel that there is any loss that has taken place. And so what, even if we didn't know, it's okay. One evening we went over there to the temple to listen to the satsang, that's enough. You know, kind of, now we have made our presence felt. Whatever, the, that must be, it's okay. Sometime. All these mahatmas, sadhu mahatmas, they keep coming, they will talk also or something. It's okay. We know everything. What is that? What Sri Krishna told to Arjuna, we know. What did Sri Krishna tell? We know. Oh, why? Don't ask me. Why? Because see, this is a very secret knowledge. It is not given like that. But you please tell me. The secret is, I pretend to know, but I don't know. You see, we carry that. Curiosity is not what we are looking at. We are looking at what, what is it that, that would happen if you know what a wise man is? How does this wise man happen to deal with the world? The same world in which you are living, I am living. The world where there is so much of conflict, there is violence, there is pressure, there is torture, yeah? there is mistrust, distrust, and in the same world, the wise man happens to live. I am also living in the same world, but I find that this world continues to trouble me in one way or the other. Then similarly, the world also must be a source of trouble to the wise man. What does the wise man do? And how does he move about in the same world, same people, in the circumstances that we are in? And this is the topic. Okay? So in these three days, we are going to look at it from all the possible angles that we can come to. We have a very interesting contradiction. And the contradiction is that Bhagavan Patanjali the author of the Yoga Sutra says, Sarvam Dukkham Hi Vivekinam. For a Viveki person, what does he see? 
that everything is laden with dukkha. You, you remember that story of Midas, King Midas. And that King Midas had got a boon that anything that he would touch would turn into gold. So he kept touching everything. And everything, every object that he touched became gold. Then at the end, he was so happy that he, he touched his, held the hand of his own daughter or whatever. And this daughter became a statue of gold. Everything. Like that, we also touch anything. In the beginning it is all nice. But later on, then it starts becoming a problem. In the beginning, everything appears to be so nice. But later on, it starts showing its colors, you say. So, Bhagavan Patanjali says, Who is this Viveki person for him? What is the thing for a Viveki? He sees that everything is fret with Dukkham. And then, what do we say? We are saying that everything has got a possibility of Sukham. Everything has got a possibility of Sukham. All that we need to do is to remove those factors which can make the whole matter sour, bitter. Remove it. Uh, those people who eat fish, they know. How do you eat that fish? So he says that remove that bone, remove that thorn and eat the fish. Kandaka, eh? remove. So there is a thorn, it may get stuck in your throat, it may hurt your mouth. But when you have to eat the fish, you have to remove it skillfully. Like that, all the objects and everything in this world, when you want to enjoy, what you should do is just try to remove those things which can cause trouble. And therefore, the husband also tries to change his wife till the end, the wife tries to change the husband till the end. What are you doing? We are just making that person nice, you know, we are removing that what is bad. But that kata doesn't seem to end, it goes on and on. So for Patanjali, he says, Sarvam Dukkamayam Hi. Hey, it is all. Even Buddha said that. Dukkham. Everything is Dukkham. And therefore, generally, you will observe that, you know, um, most of the spiritual people, you find them, are they a little sad? Or do they like sadness more? Because everything is Dukkham Baba, what to do? Then comes, this is one part of it, and you have to find the right Fulcrum of balance. Ah. So there is Taitariya Upanishad. And in this Taitariya Upanishad, there is the definition of what can be called as Manushananda. The Sukham, if the human Sukham can be quantified, what is the quantity of Sukham and what is what can be really called as the joy or happiness of a Manushya, of, as a human being? Okay? 
and there it goes. What is that manushya? You are syat, sadhu, you are The person has got a body. How is it? You are is still in his prime. Because when our age advances, a person naturally starts losing interest in life. As long as the person is young, he has got that enthusiasm, got to do, has to achieve, got to, hey, old person, will you like to try some food? You know, will you like to do some, go for an adventure? You, you people, well, I'm happy watching TV. If I don't watch TV, how will these people earn? So I have to do that social service for them. So the person starts losing interest. We are not talking about chronological age over here. You are sadhu, you are How is he? His interest, his enthusiasm is fresh. Another thing about such a person is Sadhu. Sadhu means not somebody who has got long beard and chata jhut and everything, okay? Sadhu means a person who is good natured, a person who is righteous in living is called as Sadhu. There is nothing like good Sadhu and bad Sadhu. Sadhu word means good. Otherwise, you will have, oh, but you know, there are bad sadhus also. Then that is not sadhu. <laughs> sadhu means good, righteous. You are asya, how is that person? He is full of interest, enthusiasm. Have you observed how small children are interested? One of the signs of our aging is Usme kya jaanna, we know everything. No, no, I don't need to know. When this starts happening, please become alert that we actually are aging. Aging is not just a physical process. There is psychological aging also. And therefore, now we are here, you are sadhu, you are dhyayakaha. Another thing is, he is well versed. He has knowledge of the scriptures. You know, knowledge of your secular things, how to make money, how to run business, how to have your professions. That knowledge is okay. But he has even the knowledge of scriptures. What is the vision which is imparted by the scriptures? He has some idea. He may not have it completely, but at least he has some little idea. You are asyat sadhu, you are dhyayakaha, balishtaha. Three more things. One, Ashishtha, he is, he is, what, they, what is the opposite of pessimism? Optimistic. Optimistic. Ashishtha, he is hopeful about life. Ashishtha. The second thing is, Dridishtha, Dridha. When he makes the decisions and he decides to go ahead, he is going to walk that. Walk the talk. He, he does not kill his own decisions. You know, sir, we have people, we make our own, make resolutions, New Year resolutions every time. And next year also the same resolution. 
So what happened? Every year we have to make, so we are making New Year resolution. It means whatever you decided before, you did not follow it up. It did not have firmness. And therefore he has his inner strength. Ashishtaha, Dridhishtaha, and in the third thing is Balishtaha. Even physically, the body is cooperating. A person may be very optimistic, but then when his body does not, Kaila Sapra Karinge, Karna to hai, lekin ab, kya? In logo ne waha pe niyam banaya hai, people have made that rule that, you know, that's why I'm not able to go out. Otherwise, I, I would have been gone. But body is not gone. No. Balishtha. The body is also like that. So how is that person? Now look at that person. We are quantifying what can be called as the full measure of human happiness. On one hand, we have seen that Sarvam Dukkamayam, for this fellow everything he says that everything is full of Dukkam. Over here Taitariya Upanishad is giving you another vision. Yuvasyat Sadhu Yuvadhyayakaha Ashishtaha Drishtaha Balishtaha And then Tasyayam Prithivi Vittasya Purnasyat For such a person, the whole earth is full of wealth. Means for him, wherever he goes, he sees the opportunity to create wealth, to create prosperity. Wherever he goes. You can send him right on to some Arctic circle or somewhere, Antarctica, and still he will be able to discover opportunity, he can see prosperity, possibility of creating wealth even in those circumstances. Now when a person has a body like this, a disposition like this, a vision like this, who is good natured, who is who is, who is well read and he has some vision and knowledge about the scriptures, now when he goes into this world, for him, what is he going to gather by interacting with the world? That Sukham is called as Manusha Ananda, Manusha Ananda. Now you know, we are all experiencing little units of Sukham here and there. But we are not even capable of experiencing the Manusya Ananda in full measure. Though we are living in a human body, but we are still not capable of experiencing even what is to be experienced as a human being in its full measure. You see, Manushyanandaha, Ashishtaha, Dridishtaha, Balishtaha, Yuvasyat Sadhu Yuvadhyayakaha. Now don't say my time has gone away, now I am waiting for that Pushpak Viman to descend and all. Everybody has got time. Manushyanandaha. Then the Taitariya Upanishad says, this Manushya Ananda that you have is only one unit, only one unit. Hundred units of this Manushya Ananda, please look at that, they are going to give you some mathematics. Now you can do that. If you want to keep your phones on, put it on calculator and tell me later. Then it says, the Upanishad says, that 
this manushya, hundred such manushya ananda becomes the one unit of the ananda of the manushya gandharvas. Now we are going, we are climbing the ladder and we are going to climb the ladder of sukham. This manushya ananda itself is not what we can. He is talking, the Upanishad says that hundred units of manushya ananda becomes the one unit of Deva uh, Manushya Gandharva Anandas. Then hundred units of the Manushya Gandharva Ananda becomes the one unit of the Deva Gandharvas, another celestial beings which are higher to these. Then therefore the hierarchy of, of our existence is not any other hierarchy but where the expression of ananda becomes intense. As much as there is only expression of dukkham, we are falling down in our existence. The hundred units of Deva Gandharva's ananda becomes the one unit of the ananda of the pitrus. The hundred units of the Pitru's Ananda becomes one unit of the Karma Devas. The hundred units of the Karma Devas Ananda becomes the one unit of the Ajana Devas Ananda. How much in Manusha Ananda, how much is that? Huh? Got it? Are you able to, have you lost the calculation already? 100 million. Huh? 100 million. Okay, 100 million. Take one more now. <laughs> now, the 100 units of the Ajana Deva's Ananda is the one unit of Indra's Ananda. Okay? Then the 100 units of Indra's Ananda is the one unit of Brihaspati's Ananda. Then the hundred units of Brihaspati's Ananda is one unit of the Prajapati's Ananda. Then the hundred units of this Prajapati's Ananda is the one unit of the Hiranyagarbha's Ananda. <coughs> now please tell me how much? 10,000 trillion. <laughs> <laughs> now for most of us who are sitting over here, can you even imagine how many zeros are associated? Look at that. 15 zeros. Yeah. Then, for us, one unit of Manushya Ananda itself is not completely there. Somebody is Ashishtha, he is very positive. But he is not Dhradeshtha. Somebody is very Dhradeshtha, you know, firm resolve. That person may have a very firm resolve. Yeah? But then, he is not Balishtha. So, but you know, now how to go? You guys go, I will give you a gift. All my best wishes are there with you. You people carry on furthermore. Why? I can't. Now, in the next life, I will come back to you. <laughs> Balishtha is not there. He may have, he may be very optimistic even about making money. But he is not a good natured person. He is not a good natured person. He is not sadhu. 
he may be a very good natured person but he does not have the vision of the scriptures so that that is not there something is lacking and therefore we cannot even imagine what is the unit of one manushya you say and we are talking about the full measure of that hiranyagar bhaga ananda why are we discussing this eh? to tell you that the upanishad says the ananda of hiranyagar also is a fragment of the ananda of the brahmashyani so the knower of the brahman the sukham which may be experienced which is there even with the hiranyagarbha is also a minuscule fraction and that sukham is available to that sukham which may not be even available is not available even to indra is available to the brahmajnani that sukham which is not available even to brahaspati is available to the brahmajnani to the man to the wise man to the man of this wisdom now look at that we are struggling to get out of small little problems you are struggling for small little sukham here and there we are not talking about one spoon of sugar in your tea we are talking about the sukham which is ananta which is beyond every frame of your imagination that sukham we are talking and this sukham is there for the jnani for this wise man now such a wise man how does he live in this world and for what does he live how does he interact and what happens to him what happens bhagwan shri krishna says arjuna my life is a living example of what i am telling therefore there is a lot to learn see understand and in understanding what is this brahmajnani who is this wise man you open the doors of this wisdom for yourself and this is the whole attempt of this discussion that let us find this avenue where we can open the doors of this wisdom to us we are not struggling for now small little sukham here and there you speak some good things about me on the facebook okay please like my picture and i am happy what are you seeking इतना छोटा एंड देर फोर डोंट एम फॉर एनीथिंग स्मॉल एम फॉर दैट वॉट इज हाइएस्ट आई एम नॉट इवन सेंग एम फॉर समथिंग बिगर एम फॉर दैट वॉट इज हाइएस्ट एंड दैट वॉट इज हाइएस्ट द उपनिषद सेज इज परमेश्वर ब्रह्म ब्रह्म विदापनोति परम परम वस्तु डोंट सी दैट व्हाट इज स्मॉल सी दैट व्हाट इज द हाईएस्ट दो वी आर स्टिल सीकिंग येट वी आर नाउ रेडी टू ट्रेड द पाथ ऑफ द वाइज मैन व्हाट इज इट let us see this in more details for next two days so this is the introduction we will discuss further more when we meet tomorrow 
and day after. Okay? Kindly, we have another fine ten minutes again. Make yourselves comfortable. <coughs>